first of all, like, let's not misconstrue the words, right? People debating Incent over Palo, you are trolling, right? That is not what I said, first of all. And that is not the point. And if you think this is the point, you're part of the problem. Because the first thing that is said here is that Incent is mainly just a better bracket character than Palu as a win condition. And I want everyone, please, what is the point of Smash Brothers when you play a game in singles? Can you focus? It's called killing people, okay? The goal of the game is to take three stocks before someone else takes your stocks, right? It doesn't matter how you do it. If a character like Bayo had any kill power, like any relevant kill power, and she did a 8 billion per hit, that character would be really good. Really good. But inversely, a character that kills you at like 60, winning two times, is like fine enough. And you have to think of the win condition when you're playing a character. If you get down throwed by Palu at ledge, you don't really, like, nothing happens to you if you know how to, like, you know, move your stick, like, a little bit. Like, just a little bit. You know what I mean? And it's not even a fast animation, so you're not gonna get DI mixed up by Palu down throw. And if you are, I suggest, like, I don't know, taking a coffee or something. Compare that to when Joker runs at you, right? Now we're gonna talk about some of the good characters. When you get run up down throw by Joker, pay very close attention to the angle backer sends you at. It sends you downwards, like, almost. Even with perfect DI, and you, like, DI up. Like, you know these characters I'm talking about? It's like, oh, wow, um, Kazuya can't land as you watch everyone in top level just struggle to juggle him. And he's like, oh, Kazuya's bad disadvantage is so bad. No, your disadvantage is bad. Go to the damn ledge. If you just went to the ledge, nothing would happen to you. Because every single time I see a Kazuya on ledge, all they do is jump there off the ledge or jump side B and something will happen. And if something bad happens to them, you can face tank it because you weigh 10 million pounds. And then you just do it again. Like, <laughs> like y'all have no idea how to play disadvantage. And you're just like, oh, this is my character's disadvantage. Like, what is wrong with you? I want you to watch Incineroar. He ran down there versus Spargo and just did a nair in the place. And it just taps him, and it sends him down and out. And he just dies at 20. Palu cannot do that. Like, not even close. If I say, wow, this worst character is actually easier to win with than this better character, that just blows everyone's mind. They're just like, that's not possible. That's not even, like... Like, any amount of nuance is, like, incomprehensible. Jigglypuff can just... It doesn't matter if Jigglypuff can't get in a lot of times. Sometimes she just one-taps you. Like... B base mage like specifically like i don't think peach i don't think puff does good versus peach because puff's win condition doesn't really work on peach that well because i can recover so well but on a lot of exploitable characters like roy base mage has an amazing record versus roy and people find that surprising it's like oh wow look at this low tier winning that it her nair destroys the character she carries you off the stage and then it just kills you like of course that is gonna work like, just, does that just not make sense to anyone? It's like, oh, wow, Puff is a bad character. And then it's just like, well, she has these good things. I want to point out another thing people don't think about. Lima messaged me and he was saying, like, I was exhausted when I was playing brackets, right? And I am a Peach player. So I know this personally. I was playing at Genesis and I'm exhausted when I'm, like, just playing the game. You know what I mean? Like, playing a set for me. And doing like three sets in one day of like top eight is really hard because fighting each person is really hard. Lima plays Bayo. That is a very high effort character. And he's playing and he's just said, I got exhausted after playing Tweak. Tweak is extremely exhausting to play against, like neutral. And he's playing Bayo. Of course, he's drained after that. And then he had to play the rest of the bracket and he's super tired. And I'm like, I totally understand. Energy is a very big thing for bracket, right? And of course, like at the end of Genesis, like, MK Leo out energyed me because one, my character takes more energy, and two, he's way used to doing those types of runs, right? So when I'm doing that, and Lima tells me that, I understand. A lot of people don't get that. When Meister is doing these long runs, do you think Meister is as tired as Lima? Be honest. Do you do you think my Game Watch is that exhausting? Like, come on, guys. Come on, guys. So, today, on this list, we'll be going over 
the easiest characters to win with. And this is how I rate the game. And these are the factors that make you win an ultimate. How forgiving is your character? Do you have you like ever just watched a Kazuya or a Rob just like get shit on the entire match? And then it's just like, oh, Kazuya tapped you once or shield grabbed you once or did anything once and you explode? That's called forgiveness by the character, okay? My character doesn't do that. My character doesn't give me forgiveness unless I like randomly pull like a stitch or something like that. There is no forgiveness like death. You don't get that. And and also these characters are very durable, mind you. Like how many times do you see Rob's and Kazuya's and Game Watch's getting edge guarded? Where is he? And and I I genuinely think I I love Kazuya and I see riddles there and I I love riddles I love riddles so 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 much so much because riddles is like the perfect example of like showing off like these like perfect like things I want to talk about where people are like oh yeah but Kazuya on paper and you can space him out here and you can outmaneuver him and you can do these things because people again hyper focus all these bad traits about characters was like oh Kazuya has this weird jump squat he has this disadvantage he has this like you know what i mean like this bad thing or whatever or people are like oh steve is so slow he's so so slow and game watch is so stubby and rob is so big and they're just like yeah that that's the downfall and then it's just like okay well um let me outplay these characters based on those traits and then it looks like what i do versus steve and then y'all are like, well, you're doing too much. We can't do that. And then that's why everyone loses. Right? That's why everyone loses. Because if you actually look at the counterplay that you have to do against some of these characters, like, I don't know if you've seen some of the counterplay I'd be doing to, like, some of these characters. It is insane. The amount you have to outplay these characters on a general basis to get, like, diminishing things. You know how many Rob Nairs I've paired for positioning? And I don't bother even trying to parry them because it's safe on parry. And it will kill me if it taps me at any percent. Does anyone like understand what I just said? Pairing Rob Nair safe on parry kills at any percent. That's really interesting. No, that's interesting. No, I, I really like that one. And I know how to SDI Rob combos. I live a lot of the times because I, I know all the routes and I, I talk to NFM a lot, right? So I know all the Rob combos. I SDI them very well. And you can still die. Like, I know, like, what, like, Anathema has to do to adapt the combo to kill me. And it's possible. And, like, just playing with that risk of war is so insane. So insane. And I think these characters, a lot of times, they have a lot of options that are just, like, you. there's no true solution. Like, I want you to get, like, if unless you're literally Game & Watch with Game Watch up B, what do you do when you get Rob down tilted? Someone tell me when Rob is mashing down tilt on you, it's a scramble. It's a scramble that's like benefited in their like area and they can just mash it out of so many things, right? And this game, a lot of people are very bad. I'm, I'm just going to say, I'm going to tell you all, you're all very bad, right? I'm bad. I, I'm terrible, right? <laughs> so, so first of all, a big thing people don't understand too is characters scale right scale at percents I, I mean levels of gameplay right people characters scale at gameplay right so what happens is that people have this perception that palu is such a broken character palu tena right is great at punishing people great at punishing people and she only punishes you because y'all are bad like really bad and I think the funniest thing to me is that when I was trying to, when I teach people, because I've taught a lot of people now, I teach a lot of people Smash Brothers, right? And my biggest thing is like, if I am playing a game, right? And I get coached by people that study games, not just Smash, like Smash, Chess, Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh! Like they just know the art of competitive games, okay? Tons of fighting games, shooting games, art of games, right? That's what you have to think about, right? That's the perspective we're talking about. In any competitive game, as you get better and better, the errors will get like less, right? So if I'm a top player, the biggest mistake people try to do is they just play their character and they don't make any decisions or plays, right? 
and they just stand there they just do things and they just like hit buttons of their character and they expect me to make a mistake and then they get shit on and they wonder why because i'm mutes i'm not going to give you freebies leo is not going to give you freebies Spargo's not going to give you freebies you think i beat these top players by just walking around mashing buttons and just like hoping they make a mistake and then i punish them or like that that's not how it works you have to force the top player who has put hours of practice into not making mistakes to make a mistake do you know what that like does like you have to force the top player to make a mistake crazy right so what makes people make mistakes is threat having actual threat right or having scramble situations that are genuinely difficult to play in and that comes from having things like steve up tilt rob down tilt these are genuinely hard things to outplay even as you've practiced them so it's like of course you're going to force a mistake with that like every steve just rolls into you or just spot dodges on like initiation to force a mistake i think the biggest point i can even show for this is just like oh my oh my hands just broke what just happened to me um this is a great example right here this is a great example right here i want i want you to see this right look at that roll up tilt right here we go here we go here we go here we go it's coming soon it's like like do, do, do you see like the situation here I, I think there's a point i don't remember exactly where it is but i really want to show it off because it is just the most like descriptive thing like i can i don't even have to say words you know what i mean like i can just stop right right here right here that like just something like this anytime someone lands into you like a steve or like a rob play like this if you have a broken genuine broken tilt like this i want everyone to understand that if leo decides to pressure instantly after this nair here he shields the full nair and then he spot dodges right which leo decides to pressure instantly so even if leo did nair grab nair whatever he would have had to stagger to beat him right and that can also be countered by him just rolling in. So, like, Onin 50-50s, spot dodge or roll in into the blocks where he's also safe, right? And then spot dodges and then starts mashing up tilt. And then once he's mashing up tilt, I don't think people realize that this up tilt... So even if Leo shields here somehow, right, he didn't, like, do that. As soon as you put yourself in this position right here and he starts up tilting, it is plus, like, three fresh. Like the front hit of the diamond like axe and it just hacks your shield and it just like what are you gonna do in there and look what is he gonna do roll out the, he's blocked in this is quite literally a, you cannot play the situation of course he's gonna get the combo here that like hello and and that was the laziest steve combo i've ever seen i think the funniest thing to me is when i was watching own at smash con he just did like on gluto he did up air up air jump up air up air no blocks no nothing 40 percent off pure diamond up airs and i was just like no pick finisher no block like even i can do that one like up air up air block up air, up till up air up air forward air and get like 70 but no we, we just did the literal bare minimum and we are still rocking it out here 3 0 -ing leo like like with literal ease mind you because it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter right if you use things like that of course you're gonna force error so these are some of the best characters at forcing error and giving reward and just giving you as many chances as possible because notice these characters are actually really really durable for some reason like oddly durable like we're, we're approaching like this where is it where is it no like where is it oh oh Just a, just a key note for everyone. If you, if you see the top player running around and trolling like their ass off, then like it like I'm I, the, the risk reward is stupid. If like every single time you see T grab a bell and start like dancing and rolling five times in a row, that's because the risk reward is fucked. As everyone's like holding like shield and walking around for their life and he has bell and you will literally die to ridley forward smash in the form of a ghost um at 60. that that's why because this character is fucked like beyond fucked he has better boxing than most characters the best grab in the game it beats spot dodge like i i cannot describe to you like what this character is it is actually 
the most demonic. Bandai Namco is not sneaky with this Kazuya Pac-Man shit. Not sneaky. They made the game. They're like, oh, let's get some reps in there. Like, ugh. like people love to talk about how like stupid some of the characters like Palu and like Cloud are and stuff like that, which like kind of normalized characters. But like, <laughs> you realize they're just running away and swatting you for like the entire game because they're trying their best not to die to you, right? And I I feel like most people don't let things happen sometimes. Like, sometimes it's just like, okay, don't run into Palu. I feel like the only time I've ever been hit by Palu is if I run straight into them. And I'm like, oh, I really want to hit you. And they just, like, get the perfect retreating bear. And it's like, wow, if I stand there and watch you, you'll just run out of stage eventually. Like, people just don't know how to use stage. People don't know how to use, like, win cons. Like, I don't even know. How, how did people just look at Luigi win for so long and be like, oh, yeah, that, that has nothing to do with anything. And then, like, this is, like, the, like, the easy tier. This is the easy tier. Like, this is like winning with like slight effort. Like you're gonna have to put in a little bit of work if you want it, but this is, they're still very winning characters. This, oh my God. Oh my God. And, and mind you, this placement is not like a, I'm saying all these characters are in the same tier. I'm just saying Samus is very good. I don't know if you've noticed how many Samus reps there are that are just get good at winning and stuff like that because this is the, one of the easiest characters to play. Consistent and easiest characters to play. Like you literally just sit there and you charge shot, you up B, and it has the most glue. Like bomb on ledge is glue. Like actual glue. Four throw into bomb the ledge is a true combo. Has anyone ever thought about that? Forward throw or back throw from Samus is a combo into bomb the ledge? Like... Oh man... I don't even know how to like sort this... And, and then the problem is... I, I know everyone wants to talk about Mithra... But Mithra doesn't have like... To me, Mithra doesn't have X-Factor. Like, she has X-Factor, but it's not like... Insane. Which is the problem, because she actually has problems. Like, genuine problems. Because it would be different if Pyra grabbed you and she down threw you. And you died at, like, 140. Because that's what Steve does when he up throws you. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, there's, like, something on top that just tops everything off. Like, Mithra's just, like, broken. But it's not, like, broken and then, like, what the fuck. Like, to me, Terry is, like, broken and then it's just, like, infinite supers? Like, he just supers and, like, supers again and then supers until you literally kill him. Like, if Mithra... And, and it comes from two things. If Mithra had a recovery, or if Mithra had, like, some absurdly killing thing that just didn't make sense, too. Like, if she could just grab you and down throw, like, jump switch forward air you and you would just die. Or, like, Pyra had a kill throw. Like, Pyra doesn't have a kill throw. If Pyra had a kill throw, then I'd be like, oh, this is on another level. But, like... She dies? She's just really good. She's really, really good. But, like, it's not like she's, like, hacking tier. Also, I'm gonna be honest, because I'm being honest this entire video. Y'all are not, like, thinking of Mithra. You guys, like, play against the fastest character in the game with a dash tag burst, and you guys are like, oh, let me just whiff all these moves in front of her, and then she dash tags you, and you guys are like, damn, shit got hands. Like, okay. What if you just stood there? Has anyone thought of that? Did you know you didn't have to hit a button? Like, you could just stand there? What is her cue to run up and just do something to you? And and also, a lot of these characters have good angles. Like, remember how we talked about good angles? Have Has anyone ever seen, like, I'm sure you've seen it by now, the most popular example? Like, you can just do the Kazuya, like, special throw on her and she dies at zero. You don't have to do anything. Like, has, has anyone seen that? Like, it's just not great like it's not the x factor for me like these characters you can hit them over and over and over and they just block at a disadvantage and they just come back and they're just like stronger and they'll just come back and they just fucking shit on you but like mithra to me i can't justify putting her like around here because she just isn't durable sometimes like it's very possible to just kill a mithra player also they have like the other thing i want to like point out is these mithra players are piloted by some of the best players in the world 
this this character cannot like i've never fought a mithra player that i was like oh okay and then just like carried like i've never fought a mithra player and been like oh okay that character definitely helped them do that like no it's the players are really good inversely these characters i don't know you could not I, I think it's kind of crazy some people are just like oh yeah this is fine that if I give anyone a training room moment and they just come out and they can do Kazuya inputs, they're a player. It doesn't matter like how bad their decisions are. I literally fight Kazuya players who don't know how to DI. Like they just don't know how to DI. Like I literally played a Kazuya player and they were making it pretty far. They're killing people. They're doing their perfect combos, but they can't DI. I, I like, forwarded them with Peach at like 100 and they just went straight to the right like every single time and died and, I, and then after the set they're like what can i do better i was like you could and i and then i just stopped talking because i was like you could you know do anything like oh, hello you could wake up you could like i don't know you could come to reality like i don't know what you're doing like you just can we di <laughs> like i just don't understand what you're doing like i i hate just a pet peeve of mine, totally unrelated. People were making that difficulty tier list. Dude, I cannot believe people put my character and Kazuya in the same tier. Like, you have genuine brain rot if you think Peach and Kazuya are like the same tier of difficulty. <laughs> like, y'all went on accident. I have I have always, like, been so obsessed with, like, people killing people on accident. I think the funniest thing that ever happened to me is I was at an SFL local, and, like, there's this Kazuya player, and he beat, like, three PR players in a row, and, like, Four of his kills, each, like, set, were, like, on accident. Like, accidental kills. And I was just like, damn, that's crazy. I don't think I've ever accidental someone in my life. Like, pure accidental. And, and... <laughs> it's just so funny to me. And then the, the same thing applies with, like, ICs. People don't understand, like, these ICs players, they quite literally just practice setups. And then they just, they just spam setups. They're not, like, really looking at you. They just do the setup. If that makes sense. And the setup involves desyncing and covering multiple options at once that don't really matter what you're doing. Unless you have something specific to beat them, like a Rob Laser or, like, a Pyro Side B. So that's why characters that have to box with them, like Fox and stuff like that, like, struggle with Ice Climbers. You've po po uh, probably seen, like, Big D and, like, Light and stuff like that. So... Um... Like, this character is not in the same because you just spam that ups. No, Big D thinks. Big D is a good player, but it's just like, these ICs players just be mashing shit. They just be mashing shit. They just do whatever and they don't even look at you. And that's the difference. They're not looking at you. Like, people just don't have to look sometimes when they're doing these technical things. And that's like what people don't get. Because they're doing the technical stuff like in a vacuum. They're just like sitting there in their own space doing it. Where it's like, mine is like, do it, react, and do that. Just think about how many players you can think about that play ICs and can do all these crazy death combos. I can name, like, so many players that I just, like, random ICs players that do these death combos that are, like, supposedly insane. But if they were that insane, I know they wouldn't all be doing them. Because, like, I know, like, Anathema's combos that he does are harder because not everyone does them on such a popular character, on Rob. But every single ICs player I know can just do these, like, spinny death combos. It's not that hard to desync. It's really not... Like, I promise you, everyone does it. They they all do it. And as soon as something taps you, you just die, and it's a vacuum combo. Like, it's very easy when you have a vacuum combo. Let me see. When anyone asks me, like, Mute, I want to win, right? Because the topic of this, like, whole conversation is, like, how to win an ultimate. These are your best picks. I'm telling you right now, these are your best picks for just, like, winning randomly for fun. Like, the slight effort is, like, you'll have to, like, kind of look at the game and, like, know what you're doing and stuff like that. These characters at the top will play for you if you just learn how to do their emotions. They will literally just play the game for you.
by far like the easiest characters to win with in the game i, I think like luigi's in this tier too like fox fox is not like a baby character like at all fox is not a baby character He's, he's not as hard as everyone talks about it, or like Light makes it out to be. I think Light at some point was looking at me and being like, my character's harder than yours. I was like, wow, we're delusional. <laughs> wow, we're delusional. We were literally at Ludwig's and he was like, yeah, my character's harder than yours or some shit like that. Or he was like, me playing worse is worse than you playing worse. I'm like, what the fuck did you just say to me? That shit was crazy. I just walked away. I was like, Jesus Christ. Um, Troy is not like a character to just win the game with. You have to you have to actually look at the screen and play with Roy and like attack people in a way. Like, I, I specifically because Roy interacts with people. I specifically put Cloud here because they disengage. Notice a lot of these characters either do full disengage or have their own game plan or just have negation of yours, right? So I'm gonna go in order, right? Cloud runs away from you, spaces back air. The best disengaged, one of the best disengaged characters there. Joker, amazing disengage, bullet conditioning from afar. Insane win conditions, Arsene, cheese, edge guarding, good recovery, durable. Shulk, cheating, literal cheating. Range, safety, cheating. Pikachu, playing fucking League of Legends. Wait for your fucking minions. T Jolt, run in, use a move, teleport out of the game as he fucking turns into minimize and then fades back and does a billion percent off of one combo. Amazing recovery, no fucking disadvantage, insane combos, like, okay, Snake plays his own game. I, I know so many Snake players that have, like, no idea what's going on, but since Snake plays his own game, like, that's what I'm saying. A lot of these characters in the higher tiers will end up playing their own game of Smash that distorts Smash so much that, like, they don't really know how to play that many other characters a lot of times. Um, Like, think about Steve, how, like, much the game gets distorted and stuff like that. Like, all of these players just play their own game. And that's fine. That's fine. Like, Smash is a game of, like, many different tests and questions. But, like, when a Snake player just plays, like, their own game with, like, the nades and stuff like that, um, it's a lot simpler because they don't even perceive matchups. I think the only time a Snake player ever thinks of a matchup is when they specifically have something like Bucket or, like, Ness Absorb to, like, counter their, like, game plan. Otherwise, they just, like throw shit, throw shit, run away, roll around, use tilts, run, like, just throw, like, they just fight. The, the problem with is, like, when you play a lot of these characters up here, you approach matchups the same way. And a lot of these players of these characters are so stunted because they just play to play their character. And they have not once thought about what certain characters down here have to think about. Like, the harder characters like mine, I specifically have to play differently against every other character, and I'm, like, adapting my movements and doing all these other things to, like, destroy your character specifically think about game of watch all right i'm game of watch right i'm playing versus rob hmm i think i'm gonna run up nair and look for a grab and then nair and then throw into the ledge and then bacon and i'll call it a day okay i'm game of watch i'm playing versus joker um i think i'll run up in nair yeah like okay like okay no like yeah that's yeah that's that's how that works me and meanwhile me and i'm like oh um i'm playing game of watch he's gonna nair here so i have to counter this here or i have to completely dodge him here um or i'm playing like like you have to do things differently like there's a problem when i see people do the same thing to every opponent no matter what character they're playing who they're playing they play the exact same and that's because your character is polarizing in one way or another like, okay, Min Min. Oh, I'm, I'm playing versus some Min Min. It's so different. I'm going to arm and I'm going to arm. Like, it's the same thing. Like, if you have a similar flowchart that covers that many characters, like Samus sitting there, charge shotting, fair anti-air, charge shot, throw them to the ledge, bomb the ledge. If that's the entire game plan for multiple, multiple characters, then... Come on, come on, guys. Hamster wheel, hamster wheel, hamster wheel. Doesn't that make you predictable? It does, but it doesn't matter if your character is broken as shit and it's really hard to deal with and most people can't counterplay it, so they lose anyways. Think about how hard it is to beat a game of watch running in, nairing, grabbing, and throwing you to ledge and just killing you. Think about how simple it is and think about how difficult it is and how much risk reward there is on them running in and nairing on a negative four nair. And how just just giant fishbowl it is. Like, do you know the gymnastics you have to do to get around a Samus charge shot and punish them? 
Like, do, do you know the gymnastics you have to do to get around that? Do you know the gym gymnastics you have to do to punish a spin dash? Do you know the gymnastics you have to do to punish a, a Kazuya Electric? Like, in the pressure of everything, amongst aerials dashing and, like, just, like, like sporadic electricing, not even just, like, electric electric, like... Come on, guys. Come on. Simone Biles, like, literally, like, gold, gold, gold. That's my peach, getting gold, doing these fucking gymnastics, like... I be doing flips, I be doing tricks, I be doing pirouettes, like, everything, the whole shebang. Because... It's a circus, it's a circus out here. Um, and all these characters you guys are naming, like, I, I don't put them over there. Like, this is, like... If you want to win an ultimate, you will pick one of these characters. And it, it's really funny that this is here because I want to point out two stars in my mind, which is Akola and Mia. They only pick from like this tier and like maybe this tier sometimes if they want to win. Because they know how to win. Steve, Kazuya, Game Watch, Rob. Some of the strongest characters you can pick to just win. And they only play that. And they just counterpick you with that. And and it is it's diminishing, right? A, a big thing about like some a character like these is it's weird where it's like, wow, why am I trying so hard with Peach? Right? Peach is a great character, but I would be lying if I wasn't telling you that it is really annoying that I always think, wow, I could do what this character is doing eight thousand times easier and with ten thousand times less finesse if I just played one of these characters. I, I'd be busting my hands to a 60% combo. Busting my hands on some frame type shit. And I could just never game a watch. Like, a big thing about, like, when a character um, has glue. And when I say glue, it's something that glues the kit together to make it, like, cohesive and, like, strong. Right? And it's something you can rely on. The problem with Peach is there's no glue. So it ends up being really, really hard. Right? But, like, Pikachu has glue, where it's just, like, if Pikachu didn't have T-Jolt and, like, the way it worked and all that stuff like that, he would just be this tiny, short-ranged, for the most part, low air drift character with, like, middling reward for reading your jumps. And that's just, like, and you could just air camp him and just, like, do whatever. But because he has this T-Jolt thing that glues everything together, he has this actual oppressive neutral that is just like, oh, I have to run from you the entire time because I can't interact with this move and it's just too difficult to, like, do all this gymnastics to deal with it, right? That's what glue is, right? So, I want everyone to think about, like, glue options. Genuine glue options. And I don't mean Palunair, guys. You will get punished for using a Palunair. It's not gonna work. Like, glue is, like, charge shot. Sitting there and just using charge shot for your entire neutral. Spin dashing. Like, put hydrant down, charge behind hydrant. Shield when someone jumps over you, nair out of shield. You're so smart, Pac-Man player. You're so smart. Everyone's like, oh my god, Pac-Man player, you're a fucking genius. You're a fucking genius. Roy can just fair and jab all day. Well, no, because you can punish those out of shield, so... There's that. Like, you can just out of shield jab. And also, his recovery is not the craziest, so he can also die. Meanwhile, Sonic and some of these other characters, Pac Man, have some of the craziest recoveries to ever exist. To ever exist. Is Joker's glue option gun? Um, yeah. It's also, like, just his body. Like, I think the most stupid thing I can think about a Joker is him using any move and teleporting out of the game. Like, every time he uses a move, he just teleports and just becomes this, like, tiny things. And, like, curls up into a ball. Like, anytime he just downers into you, nares into you, he just, like, hurtbox ships completely away. And then just, like, like, him dashing in general, just moving, is, like, insane. Having a frame 3 counter you can react with is, like absurd like when i play this character i genuinely see hitboxes coming to me i flick down b on reaction and i counter and they die and tetracarn is the most complete counter a lot of counters fail in a lot of situations like palos you can get behind it peaches doesn't work a lot of times a lot of counters just fail tetracarn is so complete that i've never seen that shit not work that shit just works every time you die it's strong like on even like palu our sense counter is frame four rebels guard is frame three um just like for correction 
Um, but you can still react. It's fast as fuck. No counter should be like at like that fast. Add instant to the first like first tier. It's true. It's so true. And, and, and then okay, here's the topic we all want to talk about, right? Everyone saw instant. I I fight Sky J a lot. He comes to Texas a lot. We've had a lot of sets. I have a, another instant in the game um in Texas named Bull Hall. So I have a lot of like instant knowledge. I've been known about this character. This character is not fair. Like, how does anyone sit there and watch Spargo die to two moves? Two moves. No revenge. Two moves. And it's just like, yeah, that shit's kind of mid. My statement when I said Palu is harder to win with with Incineroar is because it's so much easier to call out someone twice and just kill them with a character with such good, like, traits than to, like, outplay someone like Spargo with a character as stiff as Palu for like three minutes straight for one stock one stock like do you see Insin do up air up air read one jump or like whatever up air up air up be on the platform dead at literally like zero to riddles like how can you look at those and you're like yeah that's that's just like a mid-tier that like can't work he has an insane counter that you can react with fast as hell it does a million percent and makes everything safe like, you can't even punish his, like, neutral B on your shield if he has, like, a power up revenge and he does like, certain things on your shield. Like, completely unpunishable. If he side Bs you, you'll explode. Like, literally explode or take 70. Some moves were, like, doing, like, side B was just doing 70 to them. And then, I don't think people understand what it's like to get down tilted by this character. Okay, so we're, we're, like, four years into this game, right? People get down tilted by Palu and die to down tilt back air. I don't know how you die to that. Like, you are, like, not looking at the screen. But it's too much for y'all to be like, oh my god, I have to hold towards the ledge. I'm scared. I'm recovering. Please recover. Just recover it and hold away. It's not hard. It will never work. Meanwhile, the counterplay to Insin's down tilt on ledge while he's ledge trapping you is to DI into the stage, tech it, and then hope you don't get down tilted again. Having these quality hitboxes is how you fucking win. Like These precision characters is not are not doing you any favors not doing you any favors at all that's all i have to say like pyra and mithra hitboxes are so quality these are things you have to look at because a lot of times like people can have the right ideas and your hitboxes are just too janky sometimes like you just trade and lose and like all these situations that's a big problem with like zss her hitboxes are inconsistent and they're just too thin same thing with Sheik. you can just mash through them a lot of the times and pichu like, you can just hit them for a lot of their shit. Like, the, their moves are not chunky or, like, anything like that. It's just too much precision. I should probably make, like, a worse tier. Like, these are, like... Like, the characters you should not pick. And it doesn't describe, like, how good they are. It's just, like, not worth it. The buzz is incredible for what he does. Do not pick fucking Rosalina. That shit is way too much effort for what's going on way too much fucking effort like i think rose is decent actually but the shit he'd be doing crazy crazy mega man effort character i love watching yeti play do you guys see um i miss her so bad in bracket amazing i love watching mega man but like mega man be put in an effort and there's no reason to be doing all that These are just like, I'm just pointing out the like effort characters in the like thing. This is not like a how good or bad or whatever type thing. Like this is just like genuinely hard characters because people, people just don't understand. So I, I was going to make it because people just don't understand what a hard character looks like. Cause y'all be like, Joker's hard. I'm like, damn, y'all need help. Y'all need help if you think Joker's hard. Like, I really don't know what to say. Um, There's not that... The thing is, there's not that many hard characters in Ultimate. And and that's the problem. That, like, if 95% of the cast is that easy, why would you play these hard characters? That's that's the fucking problem. Ba Bayo is up on there. Like, she is just too much. I've always wanted to play Bayo, but even from me, I was like, dude, you have to play this bitch. Like, 
you have to know every single damn thing about her. And I know a lot too, but like, I was talking to Lima because I'm really close friends with Lima and I was like, okay, how do I do this? Like, when I do this and they follow up my move and this fucking shit happens, like, what am I supposed to do? And he's like, oh, it gets kind of ghetto sometimes. And I was like, no, it's not for me. Like, there's random shit be happening. I think Bayo's good, but like, it's way too hard. It's actually way too hard. She's so struggle in so many areas, but she's so good. She's very polarized and she has so many things, but like you have to know everything and you actually, again, have to play the game. And, and even she even like simplifies it enough and she like has her combos and stuff like that. Like that kind of simplifies it a lot, but even still, like you have to master like knockback manipulation with her compared to every other character. Like I think this is the most knockback manipulative character there is because everyone else like here they just hit you to hit you. You have to think about where you want to send them with this character every time you hit them. It's very specific. Like, a lot of people don't do that. Um, I think nowadays, like, Pichu is pretty hard. There's no reason to play this shit. Um, I would put Krom here, but he's just bad. Like, like, I don't even think it's like a, like, he's just bad. <laughs> it's not like a hard character to play. He just fucking sucks because he just dies. Like, it's not like a hard character to play at all. Um, Diddy's a little tricky to play at top level. Diddy's a little tricky to play. He has the glue of like, just like banana forward smashing you, which is why like I'm hesitant because he has such good options and stuff like that, but he's a little tricky. Um, this character is kind of hard to play and like is also not worth it. FGC characters are brain rot easy. Please don't say that ever again. And if there was a couple more players that played FGC, there's like very few of them. But if there's a couple more FGC players that thought when they played neutral versus me, I would consider putting them in a little more. But I, they do not think it's actually painful when I play them. I quite literally just stand there and they just lose. So I don't know what to say. She gets kind of effort. That froth is fucking effort. Okay, let me see some of these characters you guys said. Seth is hard. He's precise. Um, said PT. PT is so easy. It's not even funny. PT is such an easy character. They just genuinely have a bad disadvantage. So that there's something wrong with the character. They get zoned out hard too. Like they, they genuinely just have flaws. But the character is easy to play. Like very easy. Inkling very easy too. Just has flaws. Palo's easy. Just flawed. Like there's a lot of characters that are just like. Uh, this, this list is specifically like. These characters are hard to play. Zelda's not hard to play. I, coming from someone who plays Zelda, it's it's not like a hard thing to do. She's just terrible. I think Zelda's like bottom five. Horn is super duper easy. She just is lacking in certain areas. Mewtwo is also really easy. Wadi literally plays with three moves. Falcon is also really easy. Yoshi? Really easy. <laughs> Let me just make another tier. Right in the middle. This is normal. I, I, I'm being very careful with my phrasing so people don't misunderstand what's happening here. This is normal tier, right? And what normal tier is, is this is not about how good or bad the character is. It's just very easy to play and will probably do about what you're putting out. Which means, like, you can play normal on these people, but you're going to get heightened rewards comparatively, right? And if you play normal on these characters, you will get less rewards. Is that helpful for everybody? Is that helpful for everyone? Because you have to play cracked on these characters to keep up. Scaling in this, like, list. And then if you play on these characters, you get what you put in. Does that help everybody? That That's, like, honestly a very good way of putting it. Because with these, you put in, you get more. That's why these are the top 
I win in ultimate characters. Honestly, Fox is like, like around here, honestly. You don't just play Fox and win. Like you have to actually understand defense to a T like Light does to like play Fox. He's cracked. Fox is like actually insane and cracked, but like you do have to have an understanding. Subpar Fox is bad. I'm just going to quickly do these because like what you put in, what you get. Pretty normal. 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 Dun, dun, dun. Normal. Falco, I will say, just as a side note, not enough to move him to a different tier, but Falco is very easy. Like, very easy. <laughs> like, that character is so polarized in, like, one way that it's just, like, so easy. Like, everyone else here is just normal, guys. I will say, in terms of meta, Icy is oddly, like, weird to win with. Because, I don't know if you've always seen it, but, like, the character is so polarizing in the way that, like, since they just do their setups... It depends who you fight. A lot of people don't know how to fight ICs. So, and a lot of characters aren't good at fighting ICs. So it's just like, sometimes they win, sometimes they don't. Like, Incin and ICs are in this weird tier where it's just like, depending on your bracket, you can get seven, like six. I mean, that's not even a fucking placing. I'm like dying right now. You can get like second at a tournament or you can just lose. Like you can just like lose. But like in, in general, like ICs is a really good counterpick character. For fighting like boxing characters, but then just get shit on by like Rob and like Samus and all these other characters like that, Min Min. But like they literally decimate. I want to make a separate tier for them, but like I don't, I don't know. Should I do it? It's just like polarizing. Like these are bracket like killers and makers. I don't know. That this is a better tier for them. This character too. Goes crazy sometimes. Just depend what your bracket. Depend what your bracket is. And also used in counterpicks best. I don't know if y'all remember Salem's hero. Uh, he would just counterpick people with that and just nuke them. Like I don't think this character is hard. He's just bad. Peanut does some like very interesting innovations with uh, Mac. I'll be honest, but I don't think they're like hard. He just like did like a landing, like pivot up tilt stuff. Like it wasn't like I don't know. Like it's not his fault. Like he can't do anything more complex on that fucking character. But um, like you know. Yeah, these are these are just all standard. Like I, I can't even say anything. These are such standard like characters. Dun, 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 dun. I actually think Warrior is hard to win with. Because it's always been like a thing for like a long time. 
I I've talked about with um like a lot of other warrior players when I want to learn something as Peach, like I don't know what to do with like certain like 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 a matchup. I always watched Gluto because me and Gluto have to fight characters in a specific way because our characters don't like have this one thing that is like super overpowering and neutral to like glue the character together and just like mash something on the character and just like outmaneuver them. Like we have to like specifically play against certain characters. Um, move root. No, I'll just change the name because it doesn't make sense. Um, I'll just change the name because it's not about being bad. It's just that she's way too much effort <laughs> for like, like the thing is she's too much effort and, and then it's just Rosa. That's like, okay, she's pretty good, honestly. But then like Peach is like a ton of effort, but then it's just like, oh, this shit is broken as fuck. Like there's no reason to be putting this much effort to do that. Whereas these are like difficult, but like. Some of these are still worth it. Like, Fox is like the most worth character to play here of all these. Like, if I order this in like worth of playing, it'd probably look something like. That. It'd probably look like this if this was like how worth each character is to play of like the like you have to put in more work. Let me just make a new tier because it's for, it's true. The secret to winning, right, listen very closely, is to play one of these characters in the top two tiers, preferably. You can pick one of these three down here too, right? But these top three tiers, even, I'll just include the top three. Play one character in the top three, and then pick a character that complements them from here, and then you just counterpick it, and then you just win. Because the characters up here are so polarizing, that they will probably shit on 80% of the cast in a really easy way, really reliably, and then you just pick the only bad matchups you have, just pick one of these characters down here that does well against them, and you will just win. Congratulations. You are now Proto Banham, who plays Min Min and Lucina. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. You now just win. Congratulations. And if you pick two characters from here, congratulations. You're a winner, Super Duper Winner. You're now a Cola. Wow! And if you pick one of the characters up here, you can probably just solo win them and you'll win anyways. Congratulations! You're Game & Watch! Player... Does it make sense now? Does like the, the art I made... Wait, you said Pit and... Oh... Pit and... Um... Olimar. Wow, look at... Shutan. Olimar? Where's Olimar? What did I do with Olimar? Is he not here? Oh. Okay. Olimar and Mithra. Wow. Gluto doesn't do that, because me and Gluto and Tweak are down here. And and Debuzz too. We be doing this shit for fucking clout. Like, I don't know why.